In this Grand Blue Fantasy Guide, I'm going to be showing you my Narmaya build and character guide. So for those of you out there that are wishing to play her or use her in your party, watch on for some helpful tips. Narmaya has mastered the art of the blade to defeat enemies with lightning speed strikes and masterful counterattacks. She's a strong yet nimble warrior who dedicated her life to mastering her style. By combining her family's martial arts with magic, Nermaya crafted her unique blade technique through rigorous training. Being able to perform two deadly stances, which are the Dawn Fly and Free Flutter stances, she has two distinct sets of lethal attack combinations available to her. Nermaya's combat style revolves around her stances and demanding normal attack combination rotations. Equipped with high damaging skills that also require proper focus to deal the highest damage possible, her damage output is one of the best in Grand Blue Fantasy Relink, but her gameplay requires practice and dedication to be effective in combat. Being able to access two stances fluidly in combat, players will be switching back and forth between Dawnfly and Free Flutter to maintain her deadly combo loot. Not only can she deal tons of damage, but her skills also allow her to move swiftly in combat. First, let's go over her support skills and special passives before we get into the actual skills themselves. First is Butterfly Effect, which allows Narmaya to instantaneously switch between her two stances, which gives her access to two different sets of attack combinations. And the other is Take Flight. The Take Flight skill, on the other hand, grants Narmaya the accumulation of butterflies upon landing specific attacks. The more butterflies that Narmaya accumulates, the more damage her skills can deal. Let's next move to Narmaya's active skills. I'll be going through each of them and providing my recommendations, as well as giving you an idea of how these skills can be utilized. Kyokasu Igetsu is Nermaya's lunge attack or her gap closer, a non-negotiable skill that helps her blitz into the enemy and deal damage with continuous attacks. This is one of the skills that makes her mobile in combat. Transient is a multi-hit attack that changes based on what stance Nermaya is in. This skill is one of her hardest hitting skills and a beginner friendly one. I prefer using this skill when in Dawnfly stance to have the fast multi-hitting animation. The next skill on the list is Apex of Nothingness. I suggest prioritizing this skill when tinkering with your loadout. This is Narmaya's parry skill, and parrying attacks in Grand Blue Fantasy Relink is very forgiving in the sense that you'll have a generous window in which to perform them. After the successful parry, Narmaya will leap into the air and counter with an overhead slash and inflict the enemy with slow. Technically, you can parry almost everything in Grand Blue Fantasy Relink, and this skill can be a lifesaver if you find yourself unable to get out of the path of a deadly boss attack. Moving on to the next skill, Setsuna. This is the strongest skill in Narmaya's kit, a devastating unsheathed attack that can be charged to deal even more damage. I highly suggest sticking to Transient if you're a beginner, since this skill requires precision and timing. Due to its long charging time, you'll likely suffer damage from enemy attacks if not used properly. Only use this skill if you're confident enough with her playstyle. The Crescent Moon skill is pleasing to the eye in terms of animation. It does provide great mobility to Nermaya, especially if you're not comfortable using her parry skill. This skill will allow you to effortlessly disengage from the enemy and deal long range slashes in the process. Dance of Blue Petals is her defense up buff and also grants her 3 butterflies upon usage. I don't use this as much as I prefer slotting a better skill than this, but I do see this as another beginner friendly skill. Having that extra 40% defense may save the user from getting a one shot in difficult fights while still learning mechanics. Utter Devotion is pretty interesting since this is Narmaya's debuff skill. The 25% defense debuff is useful particularly when dealing with bosses. Although the user will be more likely to be targeted due to the hostility status, it shouldn't be an issue for the player if they can pilot Narmaya effectively. Dance of Pink Petals is Narmaya's best in-slot buff that grants her supplementary damage, stout heart, and a 30% attack buff. This is huge as this skill also provides 3 butterflies upon usage. This is one of Narmaya's staple skills and you can't go wrong with this one. Now that we've covered all of Narmaya's skills, the following are my recommendations. From a beginner's standpoint, I see Kyoka Suigetsu as a must skill for mobility. Nermaya is most of the time the strongest DPS in the party and thus is expected to be toe-to-toe -to -toe with bosses most of the time, and in order to accomplish this, Kyoka Suigetsu will help you. This skill will help you close the gap between you and your target effortlessly, so you can concentrate on dealing damage. For her main DPS skill, Transient is the perfect choice. It's easy to use due to its fast animation. Slot in Dance of Blue Petals to have that 40% defense up and it will help you tremendously, particularly when still adjusting to Nermaya's gameplay. However, I suggest changing this to Dance of Pink Petals if you're already adapted to her gameplay so you can enjoy a significant boost to your DPS. Apex of Nothingness is highly suggested as well since even if you're a beginner you can easily take advantage of its generous parry window, and inflicting slow to enemies is valuable when running in a group or in a multiplayer session. After a considerable amount of training with Narmaya, Setsuna is highly advisable. If you can manage to use this skill effectively, you'll be dealing a huge amount of damage to targets. The safest way to use Setsuna is if the boss is unable to move due to crowd control skills inflicted by your friends, or in the middle of an SBA chain burst. 
Consider using Utter Devotion as well, since the defense down debuff it provides can bring value to your team. If you're going to use this, I suggest replacing Apex of Nothingness with it. Now that skills are out of the way, let's tackle the suggested build for Nulaya. Since her gameplay allows her to deal consistent multiple hits at high speed, my main recommendation is to build her around critical chance, critical damage, combo booster, and other helpful traits that increase her DPS. We'll start with her weapon first. Since we'll be building her around critical hit chance, Florithium Blade is the best pick for this build. This weapon will be the main source of your critical hit rate trait, and we will further bolster it critical hit rate sigils later on. If you want more attack power trait instead, however, Venus Stas is the better choice while still aiming for a critical hit rate when equipping sigils. Kotetsu is also not a bad option since it can be an effective stunner as well. When it comes to sigils, we'll be prioritizing the critical hits and critical damage ones and also adding some of the other traits that I think work best for this build. If your sigil slots are limited at the moment, prioritize critical damage instead since Florithium Blade will provide this build with a significant amount of critical hit rate trait. Note that the tiers of the suggested sigils in this setup are not mandatory, but the ideal ones just work with whatever you have currently. When playing Maniac or Proud Difficulty quests, enemies can take you down in one or two hits, so increasing your HP with health or Aegis sigils will give this build more survivability. Depending on your skill level or how well you know a certain fight, you can remove these and equip more offensive sigil types so you can enjoy higher damage. But I suggest aiming for at least 22 for the HP trait, and 11 or 13 or so in the Aegis trait to gain a substantial boost to survivability. And as I mentioned previously, you're not required to have the same trait levels, we're just providing suggestions for you to know what to aim for. Equipping the right sigils is more important than the tier of sigils themselves, so just equip Nirmaya with what you have, especially in the early parts of the game. Critical chance sigils are expected for this Nirmaya build. Our main goal is to have near 80% critical hit chance. A level 150 Florithium Blade provides a level 25 critical hit trait, so in most cases, this should be enough. But if your Florithium Blade is not yet maxed, you can use critical hit rate sigils to reach the suggested trait level. And since we have increased critical hit chance trait, it's a must to slot critical damage sigils for more damage multiplier. Preferably, this trait should be nearing the max level, which is 30 to have that 50% damage multiplier. Combo booster sigils will work perfectly for this build as well. What it does is it gradually boosts the user's damage for each successive hit to enemies. Characters that can do high speed attack combinations will benefit from this trait, and Nirmaya is one of them. Combo Booster's ideal trait should be level 20 and above to have the minimum 80% boost to damage dealt. Cascade Sigil shortens kill cooldowns whenever the user hits a target. This is perfect for Nirmaya as she is constantly toe to toe with bosses, and you'll be seeing shorter cooldowns thanks to her attack flurries. The ideal trait level for Cascade should be a level 15 and above to have a minimum of 1.5% skill cooldown reduction per hit. Later on in Grand Blue Fantasy Relink, if you've already maxed your sigil upgrades, you'll be freeing some slots and I see stun power benefiting your Maya. Stunning enemies is a great strategy to access link time frequently, so consider slotting this. Damage cap sigils play a pivotal role in increasing your overall damage when reaching Grand Blue Fantasy Relink endgame. This trait increases your damage ceiling, so pay attention if you're not gaining higher damage numbers despite increasing your attack stat. Now that we've tackled the build for Narmaya, let's move on to our actual usage. The majority of her DPS comes from her normal attack loop, thus it's a must to master both of her stances. You'll be playing with a lot of charged attacks while using her, so it may pose a challenge for newer players. What I usually do is buff myself with Dance of Pink Petals at the start of the battle to gain the supplementary buff and attack boost. Then I will lunge into my target with Kyoka Suigetsu and follow up with a normal attack charge. After the charge attack animation, notice that she will glow, signaling that it is perfect time to switch to the Free Flutter stance. After switching to this stance, I'm exhausting its combo until I reach its spinning animation. When the spinning animation completes, you will notice that she will glow again, signaling the user to switch stances once more. If you manage to switch stances correctly, she will do a special animation depending on what stance you switched into. By following this pattern, you'll be starting her combo in the Dawnfly stance and it will later then switch back to Free Flutter. It is overwhelming at first since it's quite challenging to manage her rotation, especially in a real combat scenario, thus I see her as an advanced character to use. To make things easier, always remember that with every skill that you use, you should be using her charge attack when in Dawnfly stance. What it does is quickens the charge time, making these easier and faster to pull off. After landing the fourth hit of her Dawnfly stance combo, always do the charge attack so that after its animation you can transition back to the Free Flutter stance. If you have done this correctly, she will release a shockwave that deals damage over time. In terms of party composition, Nirmaya can fit right in in any party setup as a main DPS. You can bring another DPS as a stunner if you wish so you can enjoy more link attacks. Pair them with two supporting characters and you're all set. 
For a party composition example, Nirmaya would be the main damage dealer of the group. Lancelot for stuns and damage, he can also use his Glacial Crown control skill to hold enemies. Cagliostro can fill in the main support role with her all-around buffs and burst heals. She can also do revives for clutch moments. The last person would be Gran, set as a secondary support equipped with the skill Stall to inflict slow to targets, so Nermaya can have more openings, especially when charging her attacks. This is just one example of a party composition that can work with Nermaya. She is an utter beast in terms of damage, so she'll fit into almost any party composition. Despite her demanding gameplay, if you can master her, she will do wonders for your team. So that wraps up our Narmaya character guide and build guide. I hope you guys got something useful from it. If there are things I forgot to mention, please leave them in the comments. And if you have further questions about Narmaya, also leave them in the comments below and I will try and answer them as quickly as I can.